Guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Accelerate Life University, XLR8Life.com. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the motivation, the energy, the life, and all the success you really want and deserve? With no further to do, here's Coach Lou. Here's Coach Lou. Hey, hey, good morning. Welcome back to Good Breakthrough with Coach Lou, guys. It is Monday morning, right here in cloudy Central Florida. It's been misting, it's been cloudy, it's been one of those fall days. And initially I was like, oh, it's one of those days. And then I thought about that for a second. I was like, I'm awake, I'm alive, my family's healthy, I got a good business, I got a good team. What else is there? Well, there's energy, there's growth, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Do you wake up in the morning with energy? Do you get out of bed, hop out of bed, and go? Or do you hit that damn smooth, 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 smooth snooze button a hundred times? Okay, maybe I didn't have quite enough of my uh, life boost yet. Ah, yes, delicious coffee, guys. Anyway. One of the things we're talking about this month, well, the major thing we're talking about is H1, putting your health first. And I'm going to reiterate, and I'm going to reiterate this every show this month. You cannot, and I tell you, you cannot be the best at anything in life unless you have the optimal energy and health. And that is what H1 equates to being, okay? I know we're not going to talk about which diet you should go on. Um, We are going to talk about dietary today, but I've got some really good news. So stick around. There's a secret to the dietary that's going to make the difference. And it's so easy, it's not even funny. Okay. All right, here it is. Just eat. And you're like, wait, what, what do you mean just eat? Okay. I'm going to show you some criteria for that. But so you're not going to be on that diet. Did you ever notice... I spell diet with a capital D-I-E and a baby T. Because let me tell you, when you're on that diet, you feel like you're going to die. Okay, you can only eat so much boiled chicken, my friends. You can only eat so much uh, vegan cupcakes or only vegetables or only this or cut out vegetables. You know, Gundry tells you, don't, you know, he pushes you away from vegetables. Uh, the next guy pushes you away from meat. Uh, then, you know, Adkins, God rest his soul, told you eat all the bacon and hamburger you wanted in the world. And that is not what his diet said. His diet gave you this induction to get the weight going and then added back the fresh, healthy foods. But everybody read chapter one of Adkins and ran around putting, getting a big old burger, taking the bun off, putting some bacon on it and covering it with cheese and going, I'm doing Adkins, I'm doing great. And if you ever got near them, they stunk, okay? Because their bodies were rotting away. But those are the things too. You gotta, you gotta follow down the path and follow through okay i was listening to mel robbins this morning i love her five second rule we're going to do we're going to review her book in inner circle because it's so true she said you know open up google and this is right i was like mel i feel like you're talking to me this morning open up google and google diet and take the top 20 diets guess what which one do you think works every one of them you just got to do it. She goes, put them on the wall, throw a dart, whichever one it hits, do it. She goes, if you're out for weight loss, the top 20 diets, all of them will get you there if you do it. And it was like, wow, what a, what an inspiration for today's show. You got to do this stuff, but it's easier than you think. You just got to do it, and you got to do it when you feel like you don't want to, when you feel like you want to, no matter what mood you're in, just do it. Oh, that was just beat it, but hey, whatever. I'm not exactly Michael Jackson song singer. All right, I get my own, my own, my own musical stuff, and probably isn't singing, but hey. All right, so let me ask you a question. 
Have you ever caught yourself going on a diet to lose X pounds by X date by X event? Fill in the blank with the X, okay? There's your, your algebra. You ever said you didn't? We're never going to use algebra in life. Well, we just used algebra in the simple form. See, these are things that they forgot to teach us when we were kids. Learn algebra, the cosine to this, and this bullshit, that shit, bop, bop, boom. What am I ever going to use it for? Well, I just used it. That's algebra. But if they had said, hey, Lou, you know, instead of standing over me going, why can't you do the problem? Uh, said, hey, what if you were going to teach somebody that, you know, they were going to lose a certain amount of pounds by a certain date for this event and you got to fill in the blanks to see how that would work? I would have gone, oh man, hey, I get it. Wow. Okay, so get that one in your head. Did you ever catch yourself going on a diet to lose 10 pounds by in two months for the wedding? Sure thing, we all have, guys. We all will. You know, those part of that is called a little bit of goal setting, okay? They gotta have a goal. Get back in focus here. Hello. Yeah, I'm a little blurry this morning. Let me just adjust our lighting here. Wow. That's pretty nasty. Do I really look blurry to you guys? Come on. All auto focus. I got a really good camera, it should do its job. Okay, so we've all done this, okay? We've all asked these similar questions. The question is to ask yourself, even if you did hit that result, where were you after you retained the, the result? Okay, did you retain that final result? I'm gonna bet you you're gonna say no, okay? For example, let me give you a cool example here. This is really going to sting a little bit. Okay, so you go on this crash diet because you're getting married in a couple months. You have a good 15 pounds to lose. You go on this diet, you work out a lot. You know, you get up every day, you do it, do it, do it, do it. On your wedding day, you walk down that aisle or you're standing at the end of the aisle, whether you're the guy or the gal here. And you feel great, you look great, your spouse looks like looks at you like you are dinner, okay? And you have the greatest self-confidence, the honeymoon's amazing, your new spouse can't stay away from you, you know, it's like, let's go down to the beach, honey, oh, let's run up to the, you get halfway down to the beach, let's go back to the room first, you know, and stuff like that, okay? A year goes by, fast forward, you've gained the weight back and probably more, hmm, seems to be familiarity setting in, they don't quite look at you like your dinner, but rather, hey, when are you making dinner? This also makes you feel a little down, and frankly, you really don't have the same energy that you had on honeymoon time anyway. You know, you didn't get up in the morning, go to walk down to the beach, or get up and go to go to work, and you're running back to the bedroom going, yeah, I got all this energy, you're kind of like, all right, I'm tired. Um, okay, you know, and we, we did a couple days ago or something, you know, and it's like, okay, what happened? This is a, a crazy eight circle type of thing that goes on with ca crash diets and bad workouts. When you couple them with a short-term goal and you don't continue, okay, you start to ask yourself, where did I fail? The fail came in when you failed to adopt the habits of what got you there in the first place. You had the solution. It worked. You kicked off that 15 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever it was or toned up the, the school teacher arms or got rid of the gut, whatever, or, you know, toned up the butt, whatever it was that you did, you did it. You, you got the rewards for it. And then you let it go. You didn't continue what you did to get there and grow upon that. You don't always, you know, you don't always just do the same thing over and over again, okay? The real key is not to lose the 15 pounds before the wedding. It's rather to look, feel, and be energetic. And the amazing feeling within you that comes from adopting the new actions that you took and keeping them as habits. Okay, this is the big secret here. This is how it works. 
Okay, and a lot of people say, well, you know, we got married and then we had kids and stuff and you can't expect us to be in honeymoon phase forever. You know, our bodies change when we have kids. Rewind, okay? Hey, ladies out there, have you ever had a friend? Now, maybe you've had kids and you go, my body's not quite the same and you know, it's harder to keep off the... And that mm, B word next door, she's had three kids and she looks like she did when she was 21. And she's like, oh my God, she walks down the street and I gotta slap my husband because he looks at her and you know, what, what's the difference? She must have different genetics. No, she takes action. Repeated habitual action, okay? She says no to the buttery, nasty, sugary croissant in, in Starbucks coffee. She drinks Life Boost coffee at home and has a good, healthy keto breakfast, maybe, while you're sitting at Starbucks with your friends bitching about her. Mm. Men, my testosterone level's down. I'm going to have to go get shots. You know what boosts up testosterone more than getting shots of chemically altered stuff that probably could be harmful for your body if you do too much. Leg day, go do some leg presses, baby. Two to 300% rise in testosterone if you do a particularly good leg workout. Two or 300%, no needles, no pills, no nothing. And you know what? The needles and pills aren't going to make your legs look more toned and strong where your wife goes, God, your calves are looking good, honey. Or anything like that. Right? Okay? You see where I'm going with this. Okay? And then nothing, then none of it's perfect science exact. You do 100 leg presses and you get exactly that. you got to tailor it to you. But I'm excited about this, guys. And I'm jumping a little ahead because I'm talking a little bit about exercise there. It's going to be next week. The F word, fitness. Okay? But there's so much loss when you don't keep the momentum. Okay? That's the problem. You want to keep that momentum so you can keep the energy, keep that self-confidence, keep that strong body. Hey, did you ever notice sometimes people waver or lean a lot to one side and Oh, here we are. And then, and then you got the other people walk in the room and there's a presence, baby. They're just like whammo. And you're like, <laughs> ego. It's not ego. It's feeling good. When you feel good on the inside, it's going to show on the outside. Now, are there some egomaniacs and, and, and sociopaths that are woohoo, great? Yes, there's always going to be that example where you go, that's one of those. Okay, but most people that have confidence... It comes from within. It comes from being healthy. It comes from feeling good. It comes from knowing that they've put the effort into what they have. Confidence and ego can be two different things, okay? So today our focus is dietary lifestyle, okay? You know, it's remember I spell it D-I-E capital with a little T because it makes you feel like you're going to die if you're on a diet. I got to give up this. I got to eat only vegan. I got to eat only vegetables. I got to eat only meat. See, a lot, of, a lot is lost in the translation of you need a varied amount of nutrition. Varied nutrition. Now, you might say, coach, I'm vegan and I have my beliefs and I do that for a re Hey, I'm okay with that. I'm not, you know, I, I use vegan diet as, a, as an example a lot of times because I know a lot of vegans that look like Dracula and ready to die and they look so frail because it's not that they eat vegetables. Vegetables are great. It's not that they don't eat meat. It's that they eat anything that falls under vegan and that just means it's not an animal product. Okay, if you choose not to for your reasons, that's fine. But you got to get some protein and stuff. You can't sit there and go, it's a vegan sugary cupcake. It's okay. I see it all the time. That's not okay. Put the damn cupcake down and eat a salad. That's a you know, much better choice. Okay, so if you're vegan, don't think just because it's vegan that it's good for you. If you're on the carnivore diet, don't think that all meat is created equal. 
Okay, standard bacon is not good for you. If you're going to have some bacon, get a nitrate-free, unprocessed, uncured, and that's much better. It's still not the perfect food, but I like a piece of bacon once in a while. So I get the good, healthy bacon. It's a way, it's a 10 steps up from the crap bacon. But, you know, even if you're on the carnivore diet, you know, eating corn-fed beef is not good for you. But if you want Tuesday beef, you might want to eat grass-fed, organic grass-fed, different. You see where I'm going with this. It, it's not always the food um, category. A lot of times it's the chemicals or the things that are added to it or the way that it is raised that makes a difference. Okay, I'm a big proponent of vegetables. I am not a huge proponent of gorging yourself on meat, although I do eat meat. Okay, there are some meats that I eat. I tend to go a little towards the C direction. Uh, C as in water, C. Um, <laughs> you know, you know me, I'm a little sarcastic, guys. But seriously, the, the, you know, but there again, you, you want to make sure that you're not getting a farm-raised color, you know, color, uh, food color raised fish that's loaded with chemicals, okay? So the point being is the quality of your food is super important no matter which direction you want to go. It's like it's like the Christian faith. Okay, let's look at that. You got Catholics, you got Protestants, you got this, you got, well, they all kind of believe in Jesus Christ, right? Okay, but so in the, the whole reality is there's differences, but no matter whether you're Catholic, you're non-denominational, or you're... Uh, you know, a Protestant, you certainly don't want to be murdering people and think that's okay because all of those different sectors would say, no, that's a sin, right? So that's what I'm talking about with the food is, okay, if you're vegan, if you're carnivore, if you're somewhere in between and you're eating processed chemical loaded foods, eh, but whatever one of those you are, if you're eating organic, clean, low sugar, healthy fat foods, you're going to be a whole lot further ahead of the game. So it's not about which Atarian or which Egan you are as much as the doing the best within what you choose to do. Wow, I'm fired up this morning, but it really does help. Okay, now before we dig into a little bit here, of some uh, logistics. I want to remind you I'm not a medical doctor. Always check with your doctor before beginning any dietary or other lifestyle changes. And it is your judgment to use or not use any information I bring to you today. Now that that's over with, let's get back to work. All right. Why is your diet so important? Because it's really the basis of your energy, your bodily functions and a big time contributor to your emotions, especially via your, uh, why can't I think of the word? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you can tell I woke up on the wrong sleep cycle this morning, guys. Um, your hormones, it's not that hard of a word to remember. Seriously. So if you lack if you lack energy, your body doesn't operate like it should and your hormones and your sugar levels get out of whack. How in the world are you going to feel good, focus and be in a good mood when you've got this shit storm going on in your body? Okay? If you're tired, if you're aggravated, if your body doesn't feel well, if you lack energy, if you're a little confused, kind of like me this morning, if you didn't sleep right, because I was sleeping right, but here's the truth of it. You want the truth of it? And I cover this a lot in HEALS, our Healthy Eating and Lifestyle uh, Simplified Seminar. Um, I talk a lot about this. I woke up at 10 after 5. Instead of getting out of bed, I was like, I'm still a little tired. I went back to sleep and woke up in the middle of a sleep cycle at six. I should have never done that because that's, I'm telling you, this I'm a little off today. And I'll get past it. But my body was like, I did not, you're supposed to, 90 minute intervals is how long it takes to go through that sleep cycle. I'm giving you a little tidbit here today, guys. 
But getting waking up in the middle of that is like being woken up out of a deep sleep and being all flustered and confused. And it carries over for a while in the morning. Because I'm sitting here going, the, the, what's that word? Uh, hormones. Yeah, something I talk about all the time in your body. Can't think of that word. But those are the types of things that is when your body is not functioning exactly like it should or your mind because something's out of whack, this is what happens. And then, the, you know, what's really crazy is it's super, super freaking overwhelming to try to tackle the mysteries of diet and learn it all. By the time you learn it all, you're dead. Okay? If you were to know every single thing about every food and every macro and micro and exactly how it works in every single person's body, that would take centuries to crack the code of the exact perfect diet. There is no such thing. You know why? Because there's as many diets as there are people. Okay? Yes, everybody's different. And you might say, no, well, there's some basic rules. There are. Okay, but everybody has different nutrition and needs by how they, what they do, what they do for a living, how they, how physically active they are. Uh, people have food sensitivities and food allergies. I love almond flour waffles. They're a good alternative to wheat for me. They taste great. Uh, almonds have some healthy fats. They have you know, lots of fiber. It's just an amazing, almond flour is an amazing product to me. You could be allergic to almonds. It would kill you if you had an almond flour waffle. So how can I tell you the almond flour is a, a perfect flour? For me it is, it's perfect for me, but it could kill you. In your case, you'd be better off eating wheat, even though it's not really good for you, because I'm not gonna kill you. See what I'm talking about? Then you have your likes and dislikes. So there's, there's no one stop here, okay? Your likes and dislikes are important. If you can't find things that you like to ingest, Okay, I'm not saying that's how you make your total choice or make it so it's palatable. You're not going to stick with it. I'm not going to eat tofu no matter how good somebody tells me it is for me. And it's not good for you. It's estrogen producing. It, it spikes your estrogen, which is really bad for men. And in a lot of cases in women, it's uh, they don't need any more estrogen. I say that kind of jokingly, but seriously, women, you know, you, you throw their estrogen levels off and it throws off a lot of the body processes. And in men, estrogen attacks uh, areas of the body you don't want it to attack. Okay, I'm not saying we all have estrogen, we all have testosterone, male or female. It's just different levels and the right level for you, you need to stick close to it or else your body starts to respond in a negative way. Okay, so whatever diet you choose, okay, number one thing to do is stick to it and do it and avoid any of the pitfalls of each diet. That's why I don't recommend, I, I'm total flexitarian. I eat a lot of different food groups, but I don't really eat a lot, okay? Uh, people are like, calories in, calories out. No, I, I believe in... Uh, not overdoing calories, but it's quality per your calorie. What are you getting nutritionally per calorie? I'd rather eat 100 calories of nutrient-dense food than five calories of garbage that doesn't support your body. Okay, it's not all about the calories. Now, keeping your body at a slight calorie deficit works for most people. Intermittent fasting, fasting, all the stuff. And we're going to just keep on talking about all this. I could go on, we could do a, a, the show could last all day long today. And I could just scratch the surface. So we are. This is why you got to become a self-study and be a self-guided experiment of what works until you crack the code of what optimizes you. And like I say, you're never going to know it all. It's not always going to work. It's not always going to work the same on the same day. If you don't sleep right, there might be a food that you're more sensitive to. Okay, we're more sensitive when another area of our life is off base. Okay, got any questions, guys? Roll them in to me here. Uh, the reality is not every day is the same. Okay, there are some days that this stuff, hmm, 
I feel great. It, it gives me a clearer mind. It opens up the blood vessels. Coffee can be really good for you. And there's another day that I have just one or two sips too much or another cup of coffee later in the day where I'm like, I want to crawl out of my skin from it. Okay. So understanding that the, you know, there's every day is going to be a little different. You're going, oh my God, you, you just, you're really loading it on here, coach. You know, am I ever going to get this? You're going to get close. Okay. So here, here's some basic rules to live by and I'll cut you loose this morning. The closer food is in its natural state, the better. Okay. Most vegetables are better off for you raw. Um, even some animal proteins, I believe, are better raw as in some fish, etc. But you've got to, you know, again, take your health concerns into account there. Um, and don't, don't go eating raw pork and say, Coach said that raw is best. Because that's not necessarily the truth. Okay. So having like with the veggies they when they're raw they have the enzymes a lot of times that help in, in digestion now there's some of them that you have to cook them because they have something called lectins in them um, or avoid them tomatoes are very lectin rich uh, they're toxins that protect the fruit of the plant same thing with eggplant eggplant is kind of toxic guys if i had to tell you to stay away from it my, back when i was vegetarian I loved, I did love veal parmesan growing up. Okay, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. What do you expect? I love veal parm. Now, as I got older, I was like, well, I'm vegetarian now. Not now, but then. So I, I wanna, I'm gonna do eggplant parmesan. I'm gonna do something great. I'd eat an eggplant parmesan and I would feel sick as a dog. Okay, well, no kidding. It's a nightshade, it's toxic. Okay, there is toxicity there, no matter which way you slice it. And you're like, ooh, wow, didn't know that. See, these are things that, you know, one person would could tell you, oh, you know, this is a great alternative to veal parmesan because it's a vegetable. And it's not. Okay. But then you you have the, the same thing where you somebody will go, well, hamburger, you know, I want to have a hamburger once in a while. Okay, well, yeah, I'm not a big fan of hamburgers. I mean, they're 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 kind of have the nasty fats, and you know, if you go to McDonald's and have a hamburger, it's a whole different animal than if you get a fresh grass-fed one and you do it at home on your own grill and eat it with a gluten-free bun and and every you know, they're they're two different animals. Not really. It still come from a cow. Well, at least part of it comes from a cow in McDonald's, and then they fortify it with worms, etc. Um, you know, and, and that is what it is. Just don't eat that processed food. Okay. Go organic whenever you can. So I've been talking about, okay, there's chemicals in the stuff that's not organic. There's additives. They do stuff to the food. If it's certified organic and non-GMO, it's awesome. And some people fight with me on this. They're like, well, the GMO, sometimes a GMO is not a bad thing. Uh, look at some of the fruits that they've made hybrids out of, you know, where it's like the combination of two fruits or, you know, red and green grapes, you know, crossbred and you got kind of a it, it one in between and apples and stuff. Not all GMO is bad. It just means it's modif modified, but a lot of it is bad. Okay. Get your education on that. Don't get that stuff with that new Easy Peel or Easy whatever. I got to look that up because that's that's a, another one of the Gates deals. Oh, let's put on this coating that's toxic on the food, but it'll make it last longer. Okay. We don't need toxic coating on food. What we need is food in its natural state without chemicals. Bug killer is never, ever, ever safe for human consumption. Let me repeat that. Bug killer, weed killer, etc. is never, ever, ever safe for human consumption. Got a quick story for you. <laughs> it's a funny one. I'm going out to a race out in Dade City and I'm getting all ready and I'm going out there and I'm all excited. It's early in the morning and I've got my legs crossed driving going, oh, I've got to pee so bad because I'm you know, prehydrated and I drank coffee this morning and I ain't making it to a bathroom because there's no bathrooms out there. So I'm like, look, a porta potty on a farm. 
I'm like, all right, cool. That beats you. Know, everybody looking at me going, ha, ha, he's peeing outside of his truck. So whatever, I don't care. But so I, I get out and I see this sign next to the porta potty on this 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 farmland with vegetables growing. Do not enter here without protective gear. The, the, the toxicity level is unsafe for human contact. This is where they're growing our food. Unsafe for human contact that's not uh, in protective gear. I was like, what the hell? Honest to God, and people are like, well, it washes off. No, it soaks in. If you know anything about vegetables, they soak in. That's why they're so mineral rich. They bring from the earth and bring inside and grow and put it out into the fruit of the vegetable. Prove me wrong there. Prove me, tell me that the vegetable knows I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull in the chemical, I'm just gonna pull in the good nutrients. They ain't that smart. Plants are not that smart. Bug killer is never, ever safe for human consumption. Let me repeat myself. Bug killer, weed killer is never safe for human consumption. I don't care if you save a dollar by buying the non-organic, you're spending the dollar to kill your body off. I don't know how else to tell you guys. I love you. That's why I'm telling you that. All right. Eat for quality per calorie. We already talked about that. Okay. I hope you're writing these down. If not, they'll be on the blog, on the replay. Um, investigate and learn more about fasting and intermittent fasting. Now, this is, again, I'm going to tell you, talk to your doctor. And if your doctor just tells you, oh, that's hocus pocus or something, get another doctor. If they tell you this particular health concern you have could you know, be as exasperated by fasting or helped or not, you know, listen to them there. But if they just simply say, oh, that's hocus pocus, get away from that doctor. Same thing if they tell you, organic doesn't matter. Get away from that doctor, okay? They don't care about you. They don't, they're don't. they not educated. Uh, an educated doctor will tell you, yes, toxins will obviously you know, do this for your body. And then they'll, they'll write you a prescription, which is chemical anyway. But, <laughs> uh, you know, just, just find yourself good, good health professionals to work with. You know, and I'm not saying that they all got to go kumbaya, wheatgrass is the, the, the entry to heaven kind of stuff or anything like that, guys. I'm not stupid enough to believe if I wreck my car uh, off the side of a cliff somewhere that I want them to put me in the helicopter and pour wheatgrass on me. Do what you got to do to save my life. But then when I start healing, give me some healing foods. Okay. Uh, stay away from processed foods. If it can sit on the week counter for a week and not spoil, not mold, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or if it can sit on the shelf for a year, if the expiration date is three years from today, there's probably a good indicator that is a processed food. All right, here's one. Sugar is a poison. Period. Addictive poison. May as well be cocaine and it doesn't make you feel as good. <laughs> from what I've been told. Um, no, seriously, it is very addictive. It is very toxic. Now you're going to go, coach, you've already, you, you've talked about how most foods turn to sugar in the bloodstream anyway. Da, da, da. That's a different story. The sugar in a little baby blueberry is totally different than that of a candy bar. Okay. The blueberry is what we call a clean burn sugar. You use it, your body uses it, boom. And it doesn't leave an acidic ash in your system. The processed sugar is like a dirty smokestack on a, on a, a factory that's pumping out that smelly, gross air that if it rains, it burns you know, the paint on your car from it as opposed to steam, okay? Just plain water steam or something. You see the difference. One is very toxic. The other one is just an energy, okay? So... There are several more things that I'm going to talk to you about this month, okay? And it's going to be a great month. Also, Inner Circle this month, and if, if you go to our uh, the blog post on this, I have links for this. We are going to be talking about in-depth 
the dietary. Everything we're talking about on the show this month, we're going way in depth. And then we have the live meeting as well this month. Uh, you can really learn all in depth of the total eight pillars of health and uh, heals. It's our Healthy Eating and Lifestyle Simplified course. I'll leave links for that as well. Um, should be a very expensive course, and it's not. It's very inexpensive because I want to get it in the hands of everybody. Everybody, so that you can make the choices and the differences for yourself. Okay, this isn't that hard, but you do need the guidance. You do need to find out how do I find my code of what works for me. Okay, so also I got some good news. I'm really excited um, about health all the way around. So this month, I'd like to invite you as my guest free to our live monthly inner circle meeting. That'll be the last Thursday night of the month. Live Zoom meeting. You, me, our group. Question and answer. Some quick training. How do we put this together? How do we do this? And boom, you're there. Okay. Or you can jump right in and get into Inner Circle and get all those trainings that I'm putting up this month. All our trainings we do. Let me give you a quick commercial about Inner Circle. What it is. It is a program where each week I drop a training similar to what's on the course on, on, on the show here but much more in depth and because we have more time i'm already over time too so i'm gonna get network uh but hey whatever uh i'm gonna i'm always gonna over deliver but we do a training each each week uh then we do the live meeting each month it's where we all come together and you can ask questions and we 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 dig into it together plus we do a book review each month of some of the greatest minds some of the greatest people that have written books like mel robbins tony robbins uh dean graziosi uh, you know eddie milette the people that really affect and really have it down and live what they teach so there's a difference of teaching and living what you teach okay so take what you learned today what you hopefully you wrote down what we just talked about and if not go back to our blog at xlr8life.com and go ahead and do the exercises that i have there for you and then write down the foods that are really supportive of you that you like do five of those and then take five that are your nemesis foods the ones you know are fighting against whatever it is you want write those down do a whole lot more of the good ones and eliminate or decrease to a minimum of the ones that are the bad ones the nemesis ones and spend a month doing that do that for a month and just kind of write down how you're feeling what how's your clarity what's going on what has changed and i'll bet you that you can develop some habits in there to get to that month. And if it's really good, why would you not keep it? That's why it's so dang simple, guys. It really is. Because remember, without H1, nothing else is as good as it could be. You can't be as good of a boss, as good as a lover, good of a spouse, good of a parent, good of a child, as good at your job, good to yourself, a good uh, faithful servant of your religion if you don't have energy and health to go along with that okay it's not always going to be easy guys i never said it's going to be easy but it is worth it all right i'm going to tell you live with faith energy passion always live your dreams this is coach lou i'm going to sign off for this morning i will see you next week for the f word fitness and have an amazing day be blessed i'll see you on the next roundabout Ready to take it to the next level? Next level. Tune in to XLR8life.com for our live shows, encore presentations, life-changing courses, and live coaching with Coach Lou himself. As Coach Lou always says, live with faith, energy, love, passion, and always live your dream.